Alrighty, so a few weeks ago I made a video about the Bose noise cancelling 700 headphones. They're Bose's newest noise cancelling headphones and even though they checked all of the different specs that I could look for in noise cancelling headphones, I did have some gripes about it. Most of them came to how those specs translate into uh, usability or how a user would use those specs. So in this video, instead of just talking about specs side by side uh, and comparing the two headphones, I'm going to talk about how those specs translate into real life usage uh, and share my experiences uh, using both headphones. So let's get into it. And the first thing that I want to talk about is multi-device support. Uh, this is one of the reasons that I decided to stay with the Bose line because at the time uh, Sony didn't offer multi-device support. So knowing that I was going to get a new set of headphones, I opted for the Bose NC700s because they can connect to up to three devices. However, uh, what I didn't see in any of the other reviews was just how that multi-device switching worked. So on the QC35s, this is something that I just didn't have to think about. Whenever you turn the headphones on here, if you push the button all the way, you're able to switch between devices, uh, which is pretty convenient. I could be listening to something on my iPad and if I need to switch to my iPhone, I can just flick the switch and I'm already listening to audio on the new device. On the Bose, that's not really an option. Um, the way it's supposed to work is that the headphones are supposed to detect when audio comes from a new source and automatically switch to that. I haven't had any luck with that. Uh, even within the app itself, if I go in and manually change the source of my audio, uh, it takes a while or at least a few attempts to get the audio to come out of the right place. The only luck that I've had with switching uh, between devices is just turning the headphones off and then playing audio from the device that I want to listen to and turning them on and just hoping that it pairs to that device. Um, and that, that just seems like a hack. I feel like it should be made a little bit easier, maybe uh, double pressing the Bluetooth button. I don't know, something that you can control on the headphone itself, similar to the QC35, would make that multi-device support um, switching a lot easier. So that's my main gripe with that. And not that we're choosing any winners here, but I do want to point out that if multi-device support is important to you, um, maybe you're trying to save a few bucks, these are a great option because it has it, and it's a lot easier to switch between devices. Uh, next thing I wanted to talk about is uh, playback features. So the QC35s have physical buttons. You have the volume button, you have the play pause button, which is also uh, the assistant button that you can map it to and you have your no active noise cancellation button in addition to the the switch uh, To toggle between your devices and to power the headphones on and off. So big fan of buttons there Bose got rid of a lot of those buttons with the new headphones um, You still have a power button you still have the Bluetooth button and you still have the active noise cancellation button but Bose has opted to go with uh, touch gestures for your playback. So if you want to pause or play, you tap on the headphones. If you want to raise or lower the volume, it's a swipe up and down. Uh, skip and back is swipe to the right, swipe to the left. Uh, it's a neat feature, but in practice, like it's, it never works the first time. I always have to guess and kind of feel the cup and see where I need to uh, put my finger to activate the gestures. Um, I'm always inadvertently uh, pausing or playing or going to the next track. Um, and the biggest gripe here is that, I mean, sometimes I'll be on a call, calls over. Uh, I put my headphones around my neck like this, like many other people do. And I inadvertently, either my collarbone or something here, just always taps the playback features. So I'll be walking around the apartment and music or a podcast certainly starts playing out of my headphones because I've inadvertently tapped um, the, the touch panel of the headphones. That's been pretty annoying. Not really an issue with the QC35s because of the physical buttons. You have to be pretty intentional about pausing, playing, 
any sort of that playback. So again, if I'm looking at um, buttons and playback and just how easy is it to use, I'm going with the QC35s just because the buttons, like, the buttons are better than the gestures, in my opinion. All right, so battery life. Both of these have great battery life, and if you're just looking at the specs, uh, they both have 20 hours of battery life. Uh, using active noise cancellations and at least the QC35s have up to 40 hours of battery life if you aren't using active noise cancellations and this is one of those where um, as long as it lasts me throughout the day and I don't have to charge it that's enough battery life for me so whether it's 20 whether it's 40 for me as long as it's more than six or eight hours I'm fine with it um, having any sort of incremental increase in battery life here uh, really doesn't, there's no additional value that you get for that. They both last a long time. I've been able to use both for one and maybe up to two days of use without having to charge and that's with long days of multiple phone calls, listening to music, listening to podcasts, like uh, really heavy usage. Um, not having to worry about charging is really convenient. So, like I said, whether it's 20 hours or 40 hours, like at that point it doesn't really matter. You can get through a day or two without having to charge them. And for me, whenever I'm done with work, um, usually like eight, maybe nine hours a day, I just go ahead and plug them in. I put them up, I plug them in so that they can be charged for the next morning. So it's really no different to me. They have great battery life and if battery life is important to you, you can't go wrong with either of these. All right, so let's talk about noise canceling really quick. These are noise canceling headphones. So here's the, here's the breakdown on noise canceling uh, for these headphones. If you already have the QC35s, personally, I don't think you're gonna get a lot of additional noise canceling by upgrading to the NC700s. They both have great noise canceling and the incremental value that you get um, wouldn't justify the cost of getting this brand new set. If you are looking for your first pair or maybe a new pair, if money is no object, then yeah, definitely go with the NC700s. They're gonna offer some of the best noise canceling out there. And if any of the other features that we talk about fit your, your workflow or you fit, uh, check your boxes, you can't go wrong with these. Now, if you're looking for a set of headphones and maybe money is an object or something you're considering, uh, you still can't go wrong with these. These are gonna come in uh, a lot cheaper than the NC700s, but they still offer great noise canceling, um, all the features that we talked about. You can't go wrong with these. Uh, you're saving a few extra bucks and they, they check all of the boxes as well. Mic quality is another one of those specs where they both offer a great mic quality. So here's a sample of what the mic quality sounds like on both of these phones. So this is what the audio sounds like coming out of the Bose QC35 version two. Uh, this is something that I used a lot. I use the he headphones to join calls at work and talk on the phone throughout, throughout the day. So uh, this is what it sounds like. It's not that bad. Uh, not as great as something like the AirPods, but of course, because of that battery life issue, like these are the phones, the headphones that I was using throughout the day, just because they lasted me throughout the day. So now let's switch. And this is what the audio sounds like coming out of the Bose 700 noise canceling headphones. Um, so you might see a slight improvement on the mic quality compared to the older version. Um, but it's good enough to get me throughout a day full of phone calls and video calls and things like that. So um, this is one of the main reasons that I went for these. Um, if these are ever dead or not charging, like I'll go ahead and use my AirPods for 30 minutes or 45 or whatever they last me. But whenever that call is over or these are charged enough, then I just automatically switch back to these. So let me know what you think of the difference down below. If it's super noticeable, not noticeable at all, um, let me know. So having these side by side, I kind of actually prefer the QC35 mic quality. It just sounds a little bit more crisp, uh, whereas these kind of sound like I'm a little bit more underwater. Um, they're still both great uh, in quality and I would still prefer them over the Sony's or the Surface Studios. Mic quality is one of the reasons that I stuck with Bose. So 
I'm really not partial to any of these. I'll take any of them over any of the other headphones. And you can't go wrong with any one of these if mic quality is important to you. So if we talk about the build on the QC35s, they're a little bit more plasticky, which makes them a little lighter. Uh, the cups are really squishy and really comfortable. I really like these cups. And the adjustments are done by your typical, like, not sure what the technical word is, but uh, a lot of headphones have this similar mechanism to adjust it. Uh, you have some microfiber cushioning up here, which is pretty comfortable. The only thing that comes to mind here is uh, after taking showers when your hair is wet or damp, um, sometimes I held off on using the headphones, just made sure that my hair was completely dry before putting them on because it was microfiber and I just didn't want to damage it or, I don't know, make it smell or anything like that. So that's something to consider uh, with these headphones. On the other hand, the, Q the NC700s, a little bit more minimal design, a little bit sleeker. Uh, they are feel a little bit heavier, and the cups themselves, they're still really comfortable. They're not as squishy as the uh, QC35s, but they're still comfortable uh, to wear for long periods of time. And up here in the cushioning, as opposed to having the microfiber, you kind of have like this rubber material. So using these after a shower, if my hair is just a little bit damp, I don't really have to worry about uh, anything like that. So. Overall build quality, they're both very sturdy. Um, these don't fold, so that's something to keep in mind that if you're going to put them in the case or anything like that, they do take up a little bit more space because they don't fold up. Uh, if you compare these, these fold up into a smaller package. The travel case is smaller, it take up less space in your backpack. From a durability standpoint, I do have a dent on my headphones, but that's was really on me. I put the headphones in my backpack and put a whole bunch of stuff in there and uh, really if I were more careful or actually used a travel case this could have been avoided. So uh, build quality though is really good and similar thing here. Um, I'm really a big fan of the build quality. Even though they're different they still feel uh, premium and, and not cheap at all. Now when it comes to comfort both of these are very comfortable. If I had to pick one I would pick the QC35s. Um, I don't know if it's because they're lighter or maybe it's because I have the gray version here versus the black version here But I felt like my ears didn't get as hot uh, Whenever I was using the QC 35s. I feel my ears getting hot with the NC 700s. It's not that bad It's just something that I noticed between the two uh, That's not to say these aren't comfortable to wear for long periods of time. I've definitely worn these uh, throughout the days without taking them off at all and they're still really comfortable my ears getting hot is just something, maybe it's me, or like I said, maybe it's the color, uh, but just something to consider. They're both really comfortable to wear for long periods of time. Uh, you can't go wrong with either one of these. Now, both of these are compatible with voice assistants, so you could use the Amazon or the Google Assistant on each one of these headphones. Personally, I don't use it. I've tried. The assistant on these headphones are uh, more cumbersome to use and they are helpful. For instance, whenever I'm using as my assistant on these headphones, there's not really much I can do um, on the headphones themselves other than ask like, what's the weather? And really whenever you're thinking about like how you would use an assistant with headphones, first thing that comes to mind is music playback. So you can't control Spotify on your devices. So basically useless on these headphones if it comes to down to music at least that's been my experience Google assistant you can control Spotify um, but it's tied to the Google assistant app on your cell phone so uh, one thing that I've noticed is that if I have the headphones on I have the Google assistant on if I ask the assistant to play music from Spotify I have to make sure that my phone is unlocked and I'm always going to my phone to control the music. So it's not like it's a completely hands-free uh, experience. If you request music from a service like Spotify on the headphones, chances are you're gonna go to your phone anyway. At that point, I would just start the music playback on your phone directly, and then just use your headphones to control the, the playback, the play pause, the volumes, things like that. So they both have assistance. So if one had it and one didn't, I would say you would be fine with the one that didn't have the assistant because it's not that useful.
but since these both have it, I was just wanted to share my experience on how I used it or how I didn't use it. Um, and if it works for you, then that's awesome. Um, but for most people, for common things like music playback, they haven't been that useful to me. Last thing I wanted to talk about is the app because the QC35s use the Bose Connect app and the NC700s use the Bose Music app. So they both have separate apps that let you uh, update the software or the firmware on your headphones. They let you see all of the devices you're connected to and they let you switch the default audio source um, directly through the app. The main issue I have here is that my iPad is my main um, audio source. It's what I use throughout the day for work, to join calls, to listen to music. So I've downloaded the Bose app on my iPad. And it's one of those apps that just, it doesn't work in landscape. It's only in portrait. And since I always have my iPad on my Magic Keyboard, if there's anything I wanna do in the Bose app, I always have to take the uh, iPad out, flip it to portrait, do what I need to do, and then put it back on, on the keyboard, which is just an extra step. I just wish they would support landscape mode on the iPad. I'm not a developer, I don't know what goes into that, but if you install the app on your phone, this shouldn't be an issue for you, but Personally, I use the iPad app and yeah, just make it landscape. All right, and to kind of wrap all of this up, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, both of these are great headphones. I just wanted to share my experience with each of them um, so that I could answer some of your questions on what it's like to use each one of these headphones and not just talk about the different specs. Because like I mentioned in the beginning, if we're just looking at specs, um, both of these are great headphones. However, if the main reason you're getting them is for multi-device support, then you should know that multi-device support on the NC700s um, kind of sucks. And on the QC35s, uh, it's a lot easier to switch between devices. So I did want to be sure that you knew from a user's perspective, this is what it's like to use these headphones. These are the issues that I've had when using the headphones. And it's not that there's anything wrong with the headphones themselves, it's just the way they were designed, the way, the way things end up working out once a user gets them into their hands that, uh, that I wanted to be sure to share with you all. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you can see a lot more videos like this and hit that bell icon so that you get notified when I post new videos. Uh, if you have either one of these headphones or you're considering them, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Are these like nitpicky things that I'm pointing out or are these actually helpful things that you're taking into consideration when uh, making a purchasing decision? Um, if you have any other uh, videos that you'd like to see, any different products, anything like that, like feel free to let me know. Uh, hopefully I have those products, but if not, then it gives me an idea of the types of products that you guys want to see. So really appreciate that. Um, and with that, I'll sign off. Again, my name is Chris. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.